If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. And tonight, we're watching that screen to see if any bubbles of evil are going to come about. It doesn't look like it. I think we might be in the clear. Yes, that's right. Taylor is not back yet. Hopefully, he's having a great time out there and not watching this, worried that it's not working. Uh, because it looks like it is. And before we jump into our second episode of Land Fear Week, I'll remind you, that's right, about our... Uh, Third episode. That's right. We're talking Wheel of Time fan theories. Since 1990, I'm bringing some old school fans that were there back in the day. And we're going to talk about kind of our favorite theories uh, about Lanfear, about the plots that Lanfear was involved in, or was she, right? We're going to go down that route and we're going to pick that night, tomorrow night, we're going to pick the best fan theory as far as Lanfear is concerned. And just a reminder if you're watching, Hopefully you saw that spoiler banner, full book spoilers, full book spoilers. That means uh, everything. We're going to be covering secrets uh, that were revealed 10 years later kind of stuff throughout this Land Fear Week. So please walk away now if you don't want anything from the book spoiled, especially as it touches on Land Fear. And one other, uh, or I guess two other reminders, Wednesday, we're going to keep this going. We're going to keep this going, even though this is misspelled. Yes, Natasha O'Keefe has two Fs there. Becoming Lanfear. We're going to talk all about Natasha O'Keefe's career with two more guests. And uh, if you've never watched these cast spotlights, they're a lot of fun. You can go back and see ones we've done. Basically, uh, beyond what the actor look like, looks like, we're trying to define if we believe from their body of work that they actually can become this character that they have been you know, uh, given to play. So, okay. And then we have... Uh, we have our last one. That's right, Lanfear's Masks. That's right, Lanfear's Masks, everyone. We're gonna be talking about every one of the masks that she's worn over these many, many books and diving into them. Which ones did we like? Which ones didn't? Did you miss any? And what kind of gave you a clue? And why was she masquerading as all these people? We're gonna be talking about that too, so. Okay, that is what we have coming up. Hopefully uh, you're gonna join us again. And are you ready? Is everyone ready for this? Uh, if, whether, whether or not you're not, we're going to jump into the Age of Legends. We're gonna be talking about some of Robert Jordan's notes. We're gonna talk about some things that happen in Memory of Light. And uh, we're gonna be breaking down the relationship between Mirren Arenel and Luz Theron Telemon. And to do that with me, you are my two wonderful guests this evening, Pavara and Boots of Time. Welcome both of you. It's awesome to have you here. Yeah, I, I like that. Us. Yeah, Boots of Time. You did that correct, uh, Boots. Uh, double hand wave. Uh, Pavara is like old school at this point. Pavara is like, hey, I'm back. <laughs> That's going to be the whole evening, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's just not what I promise. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What did you just say that we had no idea? Your welcome warms me, Innkeeper. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we have an expert in the old tongue, which is 
ideal for the topic we're covering this evening. I started us off, by the way, with a poll in chat. About 100 of our guests so far have uh, in chat have answered this. Who was the second of the chosen to pledge their soul to the Dark One? Yes, we're going to be talking about why I brought up the second. Do you have an answer for this, Pavar? Do you know who the second of the chosen to pledge their soul to the Dark One was? I we have, we have, was, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I want to say it was Lanfear because I always thought she was the first. But I was <laughs> about that. Yeah, so, uh, nope, you're mistaken about that one, too. Lanfrey was not the second either. Boots, do you happen to know who the second was? Uh, the second of the chosen to swear their soul to the Dark One. Agonor? It was not Agonor. It was actually Grendel. Grendel was Ooh. the second, which is a, you know, a really interesting... Like, I don't know why that was pointed out, because we... If, believe it or not, uh, we could not find definitive proof of who the first one was. But I want to show you this poll that we did take. And that is to say, we have some evidence to suggest that we know, but let me show you this poll here uh, from Twitter that I threw up just, you know, uh, the last hour and a half, 250 people voted on this one. Who pledged their soul to the dark one first among the chosen? 51% of you are actually wrong. I was wrong about this too. I thought this was true. It is actually not true. Lanfear was not among the first even to have uh, pledged her soul. And how do we know that? I know that maybe that's a question and people are like, no, 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 that's what I read one time. Uh, I totally understand you read it somewhere, but it is not actually the case. Uh, Lanfear, I'll show you the quote uh, from, uh, let's see, there it is. Yeah, this is from, now uh, you can, you can disagree with the, uh, with the actual, <laughs> I guess, source here because of the way that the Big White Book or the world of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time uh, worked out. It says, from various bits of evidence, it seems that Mirren was not among the first to go over to the shadow, but when she did pledge her soul to the Dark One, it was for the most basic of reasons, love and hate. I mean, I don't know if that's the most basic. Isn't like, I don't know, being power hungry is this basic? I think love and hate, those are... Those are some interesting topics. That's not, that's not basic. Uh, powerful. Yeah, those are powerful, powerful reasons to do things. So uh, if, if you had to guess then, Pavara, who was the first then to pledge their soul? I'm going to go with Ashamayam. So this is the closest we're going to get, uh, everyone. Elon Morin certainly was among the first to pledge himself to the shadow, possibly the first. Okay, the reason I bring up possibly the first is uh, we have Semarag and Agenor were also among the first. So Ishamel was among the first, <laughs> you know, Agenor, Semarag, and technically Grendel, but we just know that she was marked as second. So he's the only one that said possibly the first, possibly the first. So from a tiebreaker perspective, I'm going to give that to Ishamel. Um, it fits. It fits. Yeah, and he yeah. was also, it was also possibly the first. So I feel like that's, Boots, is that a reasonable uh, tiebreaker there? I think so. You know, he's his number one, so in, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> like, Skeeter, <laughs> Lanfear equals basic confirmed. Ouch, that hurts, man. Come on. Come on now. And, uh, oh, yeah, light, light Blinded Fool. Yes, I, I know, and this is a good, uh, some, someone just uh, mentioned, Light Blinded Fool mentioned this. I saw this on Twitter. Uh, I think it was on Twitter. Someone else said something about the wiki. Yeah, let Chris, uh, let the wiki know that uh, if they have Lanfear up there, uh, make sure we get that modified for people. So um, uh, any, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I missed in chat uh, before we jump in. But why don't we jump into this? We talked yesterday. I don't know if, did either of you see yesterday's episode, the kickoff to Lanfear week, Boots? Pavara, yeah. did you see that? Bits so, and pieces I was sewing. Oh, that's important. That's that's a, that's a good way to a relaxing thing to do while watching, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we talked generally about the characteristics about Lanfear, and today we're going to focus on actually the second age and uh, Mirren's life, what we know about it. Maybe you know speculate about what we don't know about it. I guess, and and kind of break down what actually happened that we can define from a variety of sources. And just dig into this idea of, you know, the boar itself, you know, uh, her relationship with Luce Theron. What do we think about that? What did Robert Jordan think about that relationship? I just want to dig into this character a bit more that we're going to be seeing on the screen. And, uh, you know, and honestly, I'm hoping that the show did as much research 
it's all there. Like, uh, there's just some things from Rob Jordan's notes I'm going to bring in. But the, wa- the Wheel of Time Companion, the books themselves, the big white book, as we call it, all the, all the source material, I think, is available. And so hopefully they did their research. So without further ado, let me maybe start with uh, you, Boots. Is there something about uh, Mirren in the Second Age that, you know, attracts you as far as, like, interest when it comes to this story? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think um I think that she's a really interesting character. And uh you know, she's smart and she's been to the Colin she's at the Colin Dan and she's she's striving in this utopian society to get that third name and uh she's and I love the idea of her and Luz as a power couple as well. Um but yeah, I think she was maybe a slight, she had a bit more balance in those days. I think the love for power was there. I think some kind of maybe childhood emotional needs not met. <laughs> um, but I think she was a little bit more balanced in those days. And then when Luz and her, Luz broke it off with her, it, it set off a chain of events um, that pushed her to the other side. Um, and I think that's interesting to to look at and and piece through the books, you know, piece together through the books, um, the story of this woman and how she's coping with this grief of a relationship ending and um, and how she just goes to the other side. You know, she's not the kind to sit down and journal her feelings or <laughs> visit the psychologist. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm just imagining Lanford journaling. That's a... <laughs> That's a freaking great thought. So, well, and maybe this is a good a jumping off point, I think, from this character and what we can define about her or not. You brought up the utopian society. Uh, do you believe it was utopian, dystopian, somewhere in between? You know, like how much of what we understand for the second age do you feel like, or in the, in the age of legends, was really ut- a utopia versus something maybe not as perfect when it came to kind of the day-to-day interactions that people had in this society? Uh, look, I think it was utopian in a sense. Like uh, you have um, you have secure food, you have connection with nature. Like how amazing would it be to be singing with the Ail and, and the Nim and dancing with them in fields and growing food for everyone? And there's technology, there's art, there's science, there's... Um, knowledge there's power um it's just yeah it would be an amazing time to be alive where everyone uh had an opportunity to explore these things and and be secure in their lives even though i know you talked about the you have talked about that you know there probably were classes and socioeconomic classes in that in that society they were still they still had a level of security that they couldn't Mm. drop below and um, there was opportunities to to do good, but uh, yeah, I don't think anything can be perfectly utopian. Nothing can be perfect, right? Uh, especially when humans are involved. So, <laughs> so um, and, and that's a and that's a good point. Uh, the the human aspect of it, because no, I think you're right. Uh, war was basically unknown. Yeah. And I think if uh, I think if human beings right now could choose, like, for war to be basically unknown uh, that would be I think there's a lot of people that would say yeah I mean why wouldn't you want that if uh, you could be almost brought back from the brink of death in you know basically just about death could be always you know fixed if you know I think it it, it's isn't it uh, like it's Samuel isn't it who has like the scar and he kept it just because he he could not because he had to you know what I mean it's the kind of society where they can solve a lot of the ills. Um, Pavara, do you do you see it, this being somewhere like this is just humanity? And yeah, it has like a lot of it, it is a more perfect society, but obviously it's normal. It's like it's human. Or do you think that was actually like this underlying dystopia that was kind of like the historians just kind of wrote about how great it was, but it wasn't actually it was actually bad. I don't know that I would call it a dystopia, but I definitely don't see it as close to a utopia as I think the historians would describe it as. Uh, There seem to be 
some imbalances in power that are going on, a lot of the classism mm. and, and such that uh, that would make it probably not a true utopia. Yeah, they were very secure about their food and health care and stuff like that. But when it came to advancement, it was you were striving just to be better than the other person. And that seems a very not egalitarian. Um, people, uh, I said I were encouraged to enter into, uh, were encouraged to enter any field of study or any uh, occupation that they wanted. And they were allowed to use their power, the one, the one power to, uh, to help them. So that gave them an unfair advantage over non-channelers to advance themselves and to earn that third name. And yeah. I think that's why we see a lot of the people who are, uh, who are higher in rank are Aes Sedai, even though that's not the way it's described as yeah. it being, mm, I'm losing my words here, but. They would definitely be an elite, better. wouldn't they? Aes Sedai yeah. would be oh, elite. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. What was, what was interesting, I read in uh, the good old big white book here, the, I was looking for the answer to that, like who, like who swore first, right? So I'm reading about all the Forsaken and there were a number of them where you're like, like, I think one of the historians was like, it's unclear what this person actually could have done in their career to have earned a third name, but they did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. like, basically it was like, uh, they just, and it was interesting because they're like, well, they just did this one job. And I don't know how that would have anything to do with great service to mankind. Like this idea of earning that third name, it certainly helped if you had power and influence that is undoubtedly true. I, I can't imagine anyone would disagree that it was just like that you would believe any when any humans are involved that somehow a society that gives like a prestigious third name, that there's not like backroom deals, that there's not like influence, that there's not power involved, that it's just simply like, no, we just look for the best people no matter what they do or how they do it or how powerful or elite they are. So, uh, And the reason why I wanted to bring that up was uh, – because I think it has something to do with this conversation. I mean, Pravara, for you, uh, do you think uh, when you look at the fact that uh, of what you know about Lanfear or Mirren at the time, uh, do you think it was, do you think there, it, it, do you speculate that there was politics involved with the reason that she never received that third name? Or was it always just a political thing? And so it, it, get, earning that third name wasn't really demonstrative of, demonstrative of like you actually doing something it was just who you knew i really feel that it was all in who you knew and that if uh if it wasn't as much of a popularity contest that it, she might have earned her third name uh, i've always had this very pet theory that has neither been confirmed nor denied that she wrote mirrors of the wheel uh, as part of her studies, <laughs> sure. uh, into finding other sources of power. Uh, the fact that she was studying at the Kolom Don, uh, the fact that she was so adept at so many different things, uh, I feel like could have earned her that third name, especially when you consider that other people who did earn a third name didn't didn't do that much. Like Asmodian had a third name, and <laughs> he was a child prodigy, but then failed to live up to his potential. That's what they say about him. Yes. And uh, he got a yeah. third name. Yeah, there are a lot of people. <laughs> well, you think that like maybe the third name is only recognition of the fact that you were the best. Well, it wasn't just the best. It was people in like Lanfear's position. They weren't like the most prestigious or the most well-known or the most famous. Some of them got their third names too. Now, Boots, Lanfear, I mean, Robert Jordan talks that she was ripe for the plucking by the shadow before the boar. Right. This is this is clearly someone who was definitely and has always definitely been after power. Do you think the absence of her getting a third name was just because people could see it? Like it was just an obvious that it was just a play. I mean, do you think that that it was clear to people that knew her that it was like, OK, I, you're trying, but you're trying too hard. And we can kind of understand or, or believe that this actually is not genuine to you. You just want this as a, as prestige. I don't know if it would have been that visible then necessarily. I think they all wanted power, didn't they? The Aes Sedai, they all wanted status. They all, you know, it was, it was part, it would have been part of the culture. Um, I, I think 
you've talked about this on a previous show that this society, the currency was good deeds. And I feel that maybe Lamphere was just too self-interested to really do any good deeds. So she, you know, that serviced the rest of humanity because she's just very self-interested. And um, so that's how she never got her third name. I guess I think along lines like that. I think um, if you think about the Aes Sedai as a political class, which they are, and they are an elite class that you have to get into and then you're competitive within that, um, I think her lust for power would have been um, a bit masked at that stage and and of expected in that in that kind of gotcha. environment. Like, like that was yeah. probably a normal thing. I mean, look at Demon Dread, right? Isn't he the one that was like second to Luce Theron and everything? In how many yeah. books he sold? I think it talks about like it's like a, it's a, that's a funny one to me because I don't know. Like I just think at the end of the Age of Legends, before this whole thing went down. You still had somebody that like was just like totally pissed off. They're like, I sold a million and he sold a million five. You know, like it's just like an interesting, like he was always, I think even in the Big White book, it's like, well, he would have been the loose there and if not for loose there. And I thought it was Demon Dread that, that that was. So it's a, and doesn't Demon Dread have a third name? I thought, but I'll have yeah. to go back and check it, right? Um, do, all, do all the male Forsaken have third names from that era? Not all of them. Not somebody, over. somebody in chat, tell us which ones do and don't. Uh, do you, Pavar, do you oh, have that in front I, of you? I have a list. Yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like tell it to us. Yeah, let's go for it. So the two that don't are Balthamel, uh, and it seems to be that even though he was good at his job, he was kind of an ill-tempered jerk, and yeah. uh, Ravi, because nobody knew who he was before uh, the collapse and the war for power. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's but it's, it's only two of them. So and there's definitely some in that group that did not they they were not the top of their class, if you will. So I like what you said, Boots. Like the idea that um, that this was actually something part of their society, right? Getting that prestigious third name was part. And they, it's not like Landfair was the only one that wanted it. They all wanted it, right? And they were all kind of seeking after it in one way or another. And some maybe had to go through. A traditional channel maybe some didn't so yeah i i love i love bringing that to play let me um let me ask everyone here in chat um did politics come into play uh was it political how do i say this was it political um back channels under the table yeah. under the table handshake it was like was it, no it was like more like uh did mirin not get her third name because of politics. Uh, that's, a, that's a terrible poll. <laughs> I couldn't think of the right way to say it. That's, just, that's the poll. That's what you guys got. Uh, well, let's jump into this because uh, she's definitely uh, she's definitely working at the Column Dawn. And she is at the top. Uh, I think Rob Jordan has asked this. There's like a... Basically, there's a max amount of one power that can be channeled by females and males. And Lanfear was at the top of that list. For her, for the Age of Legends in that moment, and even when she came into the, the Third Age, she was the top. And so she was, and she was dating for a short time the other person at the top, right? They were like you literally the one power couple like that was <laughs> that was that was real right uh this is in the world of robert jordan's the wheel of time chapter six female forsaken it is certain that loose theron and mirren were involved with one another for a short time and that loose theron broke off the relationship some years before the drilling of the boar partly because she loved her association with the great loose theron more than she loved the man and partly because she saw him as a path to power for herself uh, Pavara, do you, that, because she saw him, like, that basically this historian saying Luce Theron broke off this relationship, uh, because he, his, into, he believed that she loved her association with him more than she loved him and saw him as a path to power for herself. Uh, is that, uh, do you think the historian has that one right? Would you say that's a, accurate from what you know of the books and what you've read yeah, as far as Rand and Lanfear speaking at the end of the book three, does that seem pretty accurate to the to the story? We understand how it went how it went down. 
I don't think that was the the sole like her sole reason for being in a relationship with him. I do genuinely think that she had some real feelings for him, but that was certainly there. But yeah, I, I yeah. also think that's probably what Luce Theron felt. Yeah, he definitely. Uh, yeah, I think from what we know from Rancid Lanford that he did feel that way. Um, mm-hmm. I I do think that whatever she thought was lo- that she thought she was in love, if that makes sense. Um, sure. And I definitely and I think everyone from a human experience can, not everyone, but hopefully, those that have lived at least a portion of time and uh, uh, and have dated at all can understand this, like feeling having greater feelings for someone than they have for you. Or having complex feelings. Like, it's an interesting kind of thing with this relationship. I think we hold this up as like, well, yeah, you were just there for the wrong reasons. You didn't love this person. As though not everyone's gone through that exact... It's like, how many people have dated people that are like, yeah, I just realized I didn't love them. Or, Mm -hmm. no, I came to understand that person didn't really love me the way I wanted to be loved. Or, this wasn't the person for me. Like, uh, And so, it seems like that's like a pretty normal relationship event to happen. So I guess yeah. for me, it's what it's what happened afterwards that I, that I want to talk about because because uh, I think this is an important piece. Uh, and can I? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I just want to I want to add that yeah. uh, Lierin or I'm sorry, Mierin, uh being at the mm-hmm. level that she was at, yeah. and Luce there and being at the level that he was at, like there yeah. was bound to be some attraction to the power that like that, mm-hmm. that'd be like a celebrity talking to one of us and you, you know <laughs> yeah. there's always going to be a little bit of that wonder on the person with the more with, who has more power that they're just there for the money or they're just there for the power or the notoriety or something like that i think that's also a pretty normal feeling yeah it's yeah. a it's very human right mm-hmm. um it's a very it, well it's one of those things we all people always say right they see a power couple in hollywood and it's like oh where do they meet that person you know and it's like that person must be there because they want to be around that kind of fame, that kind of wealth. Uh, there's always, almost always that feeling from the outside to judge how, how human relationships happen. Uh, I don't know if this one's, it, let me know if this is too small boots for you to read on the screen. This one also comes from chapter six. This is what happens after the, they break up. And that's what I, <laughs> I want to kind of dig into this relationship a little bit more. Uh, but go ahead. If you can read that, let me know. Uh, Miriam was never willing to accept that break and continued a determined pursuit of him. When Luz Theron, after rejecting Miriam, married Eli- oh, I never can say her name, Eli- Iliana? Iliana. <laughs> Iliana <laughs> Morel Dallasor, about 50 years before the beginning of the War of the Shadow, Miriam reached her flashpoint. She attempted to disrupt the wedding ceremony and over the following year made several blatant public approaches to Luz Theron, blaming Ilyanya for her loss of him. Shortly after this, she embraced the shadow. She never gave up on claiming Luz Theron eventually. He was the object of a number of plots by the Forsaken, mainly to capture him or turn him in some way, and she was in the forefront of almost all of these. So this is where it... Uh, man, this is, I think this is obviously where the, you know, uh, the moniker of crazy ex-girlfriend, right? That, that trope of real, <laughs> in our own lives that we hear of this idea that she was like someone that couldn't let go. And it seems pretty accurate, like, because there's 50 years between the event that they're talking about, uh, there, there's 50 years between these, these moments when they broke up and Luz Theron marries Ilyana. Like but that's 50, 50 Aes Sedai years. Sh- sure. Okay. But still, it is still 50 lived years. <laughs> like, like, it doesn't, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's still happening. I am almost 50. And I, and I get it because I, I'm married to a girl that I had a crush on when I was, like, 12. Okay. So I can understand the arc of, of, feeling and having strong feelings for someone and how it changes, but it still persists over decades. So I'm not, I'm not letting, I'm not saying that that doesn't exist, but there is like 50 years and she interrupts their wedding. Like that is, that is fascinating to me. Like from a character standpoint, what does this say about her boots? Like, yeah, speak to me kind of about this whole episode of their lives, if you will. All right. Well, um, 
Yeah, look, I've been in this situation. I was with someone I had a crush on for years. We finally got together. We were together for five months. Um, I had a cold. I stayed away for five days. I came back and he broke up with me and shacked up with someone else younger. And it was just like yeah. utter disbelief and and this grief where you, you, you don't know where, to, you know, everything was fine and it's this yeah. complete and utter rejection of yourself and... Um, you do go a bit nuts because you have all this emotion and grief and you don't know where to put it or how to how to cope with it. And um, you do some crazy things in this. As I said, like she needed to journal and, you know, do some, <laughs> do some self-care right. and all of this. But no, it just, it pushed her. And I think her self of, uh, her, her self-importance as well it was just an utter like no this is not my plan this is not the way things are going for me this is not happening but I also think she as you said I think I think she, you know she's obviously a bit stunted emotionally mm. somewhere in her her line but this was one of those moments that really messed with her and destroyed her trust in other people and um, really pushed her over the edge and continues to be the bugbear in her mind really isn't it um that yeah. this this got away from her this perfect moment this love um and i think she was in love with him as far as she could be in love with him um yeah. and it just got snapped off and she's just no <laughs> well uh, but that's uh, and i think this is true too uh thank you uh norley for that but if ltt is still the apex of power 50 years later than her entitlement like as in the way i what i'm taking from that comment was like he is still there. He's on billboards, right? <laughs> he's on the TV. He's Everywhere. getting accolades, right? He's now married to someone with a third name, right? And I could I could understand that this, uh, and you're proposing it this way, which I think is true. This broke her in a way that she didn't know that she could break and that she could feel this much desire now. Was it love as maybe others of us would interpret it? I don't think so. Uh, but because I do think from a character study standpoint, she she wants power. And I don't think that that is a new thing, but like so much so she's willing to do anything. So I think this did like, she wants this thing to be true. And I totally get that from a human standpoint, right? Like you can't go back and change a moment in time. And that doesn't take away the grief nor the wanting to change it, right? And maybe yeah. you should, like you said, you need to you need a diary, you need to go get a hobby, whatever it is. You need to but, process. <laughs> yeah, you need to process process it, right? Like, you, but that that moment can still be as real for you forty years later, right? You you have that moment in your mind, and you almost see a branch of that, and you might live that, right? So it does seem like she kind of went down this road of, like, no, that is not reality. The reality is the one I want, and I'm going to make it a reality. Pavara, where are you at in all of this? Like this moment for her showing up at the wedding 50 years later, like turning to the shadow and basically making him the object. Like she was going to be at the forefront of every moment to try to capture this person. What does that tell you about, about her and her feelings for Luz Theron? I have a couple of thoughts that just came to me. Um, one of which is I'm wondering if the breakup between them kind of held her back uh, career-wise. Like maybe she thinks that's part of why she didn't get her third name was because uh, Luce there and held her back in some way, uh, either directly or indirectly after the breakup. And so maybe that's why she held on to that anger. Um, or also if she felt entitled to, I don't know, kind of a, kind of a hand up or something because he had so much power so much more power politically than her right like um, yeah like maybe she was hoping that if she held on to this like if she came after him enough that like he would do something and get her what she wanted which was really that yeah that recognition yeah, yeah. and look in in um memory of light you know he talks about you know rand as loose that remembers the relationship with with um Mirren and um you know he's he, there were good moments in that relationship he remembers some of these beautiful moments that they had and I think 
you know, he he would have wanted her at that moment. Like it was a good match for him at that moment. They were both really powerful. They were, um, yeah. you know, they were climbing up in this Isodized Isis society together. And she, yeah, he promised a pathway to her that she's been wanting for a very long time. And then he just went, no, nah, you're not good enough. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's... Um... It is true, and, and whether or not she like like the record states, and I think it's that did see him as a pathway to that, right? That pathway was mm. now denied her, right? Yeah. Um, you have, and so I, I saw this question in chat: the the collapse after the bore. So they were dating, if I remember correctly, from what that said. Let's just get her numbers, and and so let's let's look at this really quick. Um, uh, they were involved with one another for a short time, and we don't know if short time in, in I said I time, what that means, and that Luz Theron broke off a relationship some years before drilling the bore. Okay, so some years, three, f- five, whatever, um, somewhere maybe in the up to 10. I don't know how some in that case is, but I, I always thought like three to five years. Then the bore happens, and then the collapse happens for the next 100 years. So there's a collapse that takes place in society for the hundred years. And then if I'm not mistaken, the war of the shadow happens. The la- and then it's 10 years when everything just uh, at the end of the collapse itself. So it's like 110 years from the boar, I thought. Um, someone can correct me if you have like some, uh, you, you state that or you have it differently. But when I said the idea of 50 years, it, this, that point was 50 years uh, basically before the beginning of the War of the Shadow, which is 50 years before the end of the collapse, which was 100 years. That's what I'm saying. It's about 50, 55 years since the drilling of the boar to the moment where he shows up at their wedding, basically, and she turns to the shadow. Um, but the, by the way, the ones that did turn to the shadow turned earlier. So uh, I think we have Grendel, it says, like in the first, in the first, sometime in the first 25 years of the collapse, Grendel swears. And she was the second. And we have a Shamael is the first one to let everyone know what's happening. And if he was among the first or the first, then telling everybody about the dark one and what happened, happened to her too, <laughs> which is to say at least sometime in the first 25 years from when the boar is drilled, everyone knew that land fear was responsible right? She was the biggest name because Beethoven, uh, he commits suicide. We don't know how quickly he does, but she was one of the biggest names. And then a Shamel comes out basically within a decade or two and tells everyone this is what has been done. And then he tells everyone he's going over to the other side. And even then she still doesn't go, right? She still persists in the society for, um, for like 25 years before this wedding time happens. (laughs) So still persists. We don't know what she was yeah. doing, but still persists in that and does not go over to the shadow, which is a, to me is a really interesting, at first, I, I always thought she was the first one. I thought she just ran to it like five years after. Well, I, I don't know why I always thought that, but it, it doesn't happen. And it, and it doesn't happen because she wants the shadow. It's that she wants uh, Luz Theron, right? Yeah. I, 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 the wedding's the trigger, you know? Oh, absolutely. She, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, well, okay, this pathway has finished and now I'm going to find power elsewhere. I'm going to find a, something better. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, she's, the, wedding was, the wedding was the end of her dream that she, this could change, mm. right? She came to the moment and she's like, there's no way this changes unless the only way that I can change this is now I need more power. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I, I want to, you know, just in case people are kind of like, wait, really? Uh, there's little doubt that she was surprised as the rest of the world to discover what actually lay beyond the hole she helped create. And she was indeed fortunate to be one of the few to survive the backlash that destroyed the Shroom and most of the Colum Don. Like, she was not trying to do, <laughs> you know, she was not trying to, like, bring about the Dark One at that moment, you know? And so. Uh, I think that that's an important aspect of this. I thought Pavara and man, uh, before we, I thought I had one of Robert. Oh, there it is. Uh, yes. Robert Jordan's notes on this exact topic. Let me bring this up. So this comes from box 45. Pavara, I don't know if you can read this one for us. This is in the great hunt file. Um, continuity file two. This is pretty early on. Some details about the book change. So I don't 
necessarily think anything we read here will have changed. I just want everyone to understand that some of these notes, this doesn't mean this was factual canon in the books. This is early on, like I said, great hunt wise. Uh, I can't remember if it was after it was written and there's a continuity note about, uh, about that, but it's right in that time frame. So here is the note. Yeah, Pavar, if you can read this one. In the Age of Legends, Lanfear was linked with Luz Theron before she went over to the Shadow. She tried to steal him from his wife, and it was her failure as much as her own ambition that led her to forsake the light. Theron would know of this from various fragmentary records, some of which actually claim they were lovers. These last, linking Luz Theron with one of the Forsaken, are taken by some as evidence that he was actually on the side of the Shadow. So I love that Robert Jordan wrote this note for himself. Is it taken by some to like he's going through the idea of building a story and how some people are going to believe that Luz Theron would have really been working for the shadow itself. But it's that top one that I think is of note here. She tried to steal him from his wife and it was her failure as much as her own ambition that led her to forsake the light. Pavara, do you think that that's the same thing that we're talking about here? Or does Robert Jordan give it any more texture in this note about Lanfear and why she you know, picked the shadow. I think like with everything that Jordan writes about his characters, it's definitely more nuanced than just that one simple line. Um, I, I think probably her number of failures over the years to gain status and, uh, and notoriety, uh, the collapse of the Sharon probably didn't, didn't help. I think maybe it was a moment where she looked at her life and added everything up and said, well, this society isn't working for me. I'm not getting anywhere following the rules. So let me go to the shadow and try to do it in that uh, hierarchy instead. Yes, uh, I absolutely agree with that. And I think, like you said, um, I think it's pretty, pretty nuanced here that it was, like you said, a series of failures, right? she eventually accepted that the end of a dream or a mission or a goal that she had for specific acceptance into this society, desire for this person to want her and uh, be in love with her and uh, that they were going to be this, that this, this power couple that we see that she wants in the third age still, right? She, she wants them to, not only does she want the power couple, she wants them to, challenge the creator, challenge the dark one themselves together. Like she still has that, but she sees that the, it's forsaking the light. It's going to the shadow. That is the power she would need to make that a reality, which I think is, you know, as someone said, I can't remember, it was like the historian. It was something like, you know, for the simple reason or the base reason of love and hate. And it's like, doesn't bring up, Bridge doesn't bring out that failure and ambition Right, like mm -hmm. it's too simple to just say love and hate, and I think in that way, um, the failure over hundreds of years and choosing a different path in that moment, um, and I think that's somewhat what kind of brings us to their discussion with Rand and Lanfear. Let's let's tackle that one because I think that one is fascinating. At the end of Memory of Light, uh, and by the way, for those of you that are watching, uh, this is. Oh, yes, a live call and talk show. If you disagree with us, uh, something we've said about land fear over the last two days, although I'd love for you to bring up a conversation we've had tonight, you can give us a call at one three one three eight two five five nine six eight. I know the bubble of evil took out our phone lines yesterday. So if you were just dying to say something yesterday or you just wanted to say hi and you're enjoying land fear week, please, you know, please call in here and, uh, I'm going to end this poll. 108 of you voted on this. Did Mirren not get her third name because of politics? I know some of you said, like, well, it's nuanced. But interestingly enough, 60% of you said yes. So actually, I'm very surprised by that answer. Sometimes I, anytime I bring that idea up, people are like, no, she just couldn't accept it. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, I think Scotty May. Landfair seems to be the kind of uh, woman who doesn't get dumped. She's the one who ends the relationship. She definitely has that personality, like it's she gets to make the choice. And in this case, we're told Luce Theron made the choice, and that never, never accepted that. And <laughs> thank you, for my fellow innkeeper. Wait, a Varen Lanfear link? I know. How have I never highlighted this one before? <laughs> um, be by here tomorrow if you wanted to be talking all about uh, theories and, and Lanfear. Uh, and we also have Grundle talking about um, how Lanfear was um, a, yeah. a bit of... Yeah, really. Can you read that servant. one? Do, do you have that one oh, yeah. handy? Okay, so yeah, can you tell everyone where this one is at? This is a great, um, uh, this is a great uh, quote we have from someone who was there. 
fires, fires of, of heaven. heaven. Now it's not that she can't lie, but definitely, yeah. Read this part; it's interesting. Uh, if this Randall Thor really is Luz Theron Telamon reborn, Grundle went on, settling herself on the man's back where she cr where he crouched on all fours. I'm surprised you haven't tried to snuggle him into your bed, Lamphere. Or would it be so easy? I seem to remember Luz Theron led you by the nose, not the other way around. Squelched your little tantrums, sent you running to fetch his wine in a manner of speaking. She set her own wine on the tray and held out rigidly by the slightlessly, sightlessly kneeling woman. You were so obsessed with him, you'd have stretched out at his feet if he said rug. It's <laughs> <That's> brutal. <laughs> now, you know she's digging, <laughs> right? Uh, there's got to be some truth in that one. But you know that, like, she's definitely pushing on that. But what's interesting is she mentioned fetch and get his wine, figuratively speaking, right? Like, basically that he treated, like that she couldn't see that he was kind of treating her, uh, you know, as a, as someone that served him in a way that she thought that she wanted to be treating him. Like he was serving her, but no, no, she was always serving him at, at, at his will. Now, is she pushing on some things there? But uh, absolutely. But we get very little direct anything. Cause we don't get into Lanfear's mind, but once I think, uh, we talked about that yesterday from winter's heart. So, uh, so hearing from people that knew her, that gives us some clues as to what was going on. I love that. Uh, thank you for sharing that one. I see we already have one caller. We'll bring you that caller in soon. Uh, that's a good kind of segue into the discussion that we have in a memory of light in that dream shard uh, that between Rand or Luz, if you will, and and actually Mirren, or in that case. Now I'm gonna, I'll read this one. We have, I have four parts of this. I wanna stop and talk about each one of these. And, and then we can, you know, we can step back and discuss anything else about this uh, discussion that, that I don't bring up. Cause it's, a, it's, it's actually, I'm glad, it seemed kind of lengthy and I'm glad that Brandon did this. Uh, and I, this always, with all the facts that we know, this, this discussion really, really worked for me. Uh, so here's the, I'm going to start in this spot. Um, this is not the first moment of this this interaction, but I think that this is uh, this is a good good beginning. An equal, Rand said, laughing. Since when have you ever considered anyone your equal, Mirren? You care you care nothing for my captivity. It pains me, Rand said, but no more than it pained me when you swore yourself to the shadow. Did you know I was there when you revealed it? You did not see me, as I did not want to be seen, but I was watching. Light, Mirren, you swore to kill me. Did I mean it, she asked, turning to look him in the eyes. Had she? No, she had not meant it, not then. Lanfear did not kill people that she thought would be useful, and she always considered him useful. So what do you, what do you take from that, Boots, that, that initial interaction, talking about the fact that, that he knew she never considered anyone her, her equal, and that he had still admitted that he cared about her, not loved her, right? Robert Jordan says... Luz Theron never loved Lanfear, did not say he did not care for Lanfear. And I think that comes out in this conversation. What, what strikes you about the beginning of this conversation between these two? Did it tell you anything different about Lanfear, uh, Mirren, that character back then? Does it tell you anything, add to kind of what we know about her? Uh, I think it, yeah, just, it's nicer to get some more information. Um, and I, I think it does, yeah, humanize them a bit and you can understand their relationship a bit more. But yeah, that lust for power is is always there with Lamb Fear. He's just understanding it a bit better and where he sits within it. Because I, I still think Luz has some things to answer for with with Mirren as well. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't think he's he's scot free, and there's even some. Wait, some Luce Theron in... wasn't perfect. What are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he was perfect. He, he wasn't. The, he, he wasn't the perfect boyfriend, perfect gentleman. No, perfect and even no. even in this chapter, like <laughs> he talks about how he likes to collect things and to know things, and then he yeah. puts them away like a useful tool in a rucksack, like a like a traveler. He does it with a more curiosity, I guess, but he's still leaving people in his wake. Um, yeah, uh, which are, are half the Forsaken anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I think there. I can't remember one of the Forsaken or where it comes up. And maybe it's Shamael. Something about it where they were speaking about Luz Theron and how he was kind of cocky. Mm. Like he had there was a cockiness to him. Like, yeah, he's not. 
we're not talking about a perfect person, you know, and then sometimes I think that kind of happens in this relationship too. in the books, you run into this all the time that loose Theron comes out shining because of course he's on the side of the light in the end. Right. <laughs> and he's the one that goes and seals the boar. Like, how can you find anything negative about this person? You know, and uh, that's not true to anyone, right? You might had a you might had a great run for twenty years in your life. That doesn't mean everything you've ever done is is great, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think bringing up the fact that he's not perfect in this either is a really uh, that's powerful. I, the fact that he kind of realized that she could tell the truth too. I thought that was interesting here. Like she's not above honesty. She's not always lying. She just will always use whatever it is to her advantage, right? So if the truth oh, yeah. is what gets her what she wants, she can be truthful and honest in the moment. And, uh, and that's what's bothering him even more here. He's like, stop, stop pretending that like, you're being honest because you care. You just, you're being honest in this moment because you want to use me. Uh, Pavara, for you, is there anything in this one that stands out to you that we haven't kind of uh, talked through? Um, I think what I noticed was his remaining affection for her just feels so relatable because anybody who's been in relationships that have ended most of, most of the time you will still feel a little bit of a little bit of affection for the, yeah. for the person that you were with even years later, even if you don't want to be with them anymore, yeah. there's still always that part of you that, that initially was into them to begin with. And I, I just thought that was um, a really interesting way for, for Brandon to put in there. Do you think, I'm going to ask this everyone in chat, and then I'm going to ask our callers here. Do you think that Lanfear, we're going to bring this up here. Do you think that Lanfear could ever have a redemption arc? Like, let's say, in, uh, could, could there ever be, well, I, I guess it's full book spoilers, everyone. So if you're still here, <laughs> I, I blame you. If you don't want to know anything about these books and you are still here in this moment, you should walk away. Because we'll, we're about to talk about something that happened 10 years after the books ended. Uh, but that's enough. Okay, giving everyone plenty of time. If you're still on the call listening, you should have gotten off. We know that Lanfear is still alive in the fourth age. Do you think this is someone that can be redeemed, that can choose the light and actually come back to the light? If it suits her. <laughs> 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 she leaves all the gates open, doesn't she? Like she does, she leaves room for for that to happen, if it suits her. I I agree. I I definitely think she can be turned back to the light because I don't think evil is is her purpose. Like she's not with the shadow because she wants to be with the shadow more than she wants anything else. She she's with the shadow because she didn't. She felt like that was where she needed to be to to get what she wanted. So I think maybe if she has some self-reflection and she uh, can, can learn from, <laughs> yeah, she, she does the journaling. <laughs> she, if she can look back on her past and learn from her mistakes, which I, I fully believe that she is capable of doing, that she could, that she could go on to, uh, I don't know, disguise herself and try again in the fourth age. Uh, it, I love that you're both bringing this up. <laughs> Which is, and I did swap the question <laughs> astutely that was recognized by Chris. Uh, you put would and said can. Uh, yeah, it's true. The, 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 <laughs> I said, would land forever turn back to the light? Not can she? Yes, she can, but would she? But I think, Boots, you answered this. Uh, you both answered this differently, but I think it's true. Would she if it served her, Right. Like working for the light doesn't require you to be an ide idealistic. It doesn't require you to, it just requires you to choose the light over the right. Like th there's plenty of people that are fighting for the light that are terrible people, right? Like, but they're not fighting for the shadow. They're fighting for the light. Would she, I think she would if it served her purpose. And I, and I think you can say that she did. Like she was, she was definitely fighting for Rand at times, right? Is fighting for the light, fighting against the dark one. Yes, I think you, Boots, you point out she was jumping back and forth. Like she that hedges is, the bets. She leaves yeah. all doors open. Like like Rand said here, she does not kill people that she thought would be useful. And for her, most people that can open a door for her are going to be useful. She's not someone that's out indiscriminately just murdering people. Like maybe like a Semarag. <laughs> there's like there's not just. She wants to leave all those doors open. I think is fascinating. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating 
part of her character. We have three people calling in. Let's bring our first caller and ask them that question to the show. Hey, welcome to Dusty Wheel. Who's this? Hey, it's Andrew. Andrew, welcome to Landfear hey, Week. Andrew. Well, so what, what was your answer to this question? Thank you. Would Landfear ever turn back to the light? No. No, I don't think so. And I think that I think it's because of the way Brandon chose to write her in in the last book. I think she could have been had well, but the in, the other information that he chose to include and the conversations that you you know had quoted and, and read, I think that that procli- prohibited her character wise from doing it. She now I I think it I I don't even phrase that. Could she have walked back from Service to the Shadows? Yeah, but I don't think it would be a redemption arc. It yes. would be just no, I, her I, looking I, out for herself. I don't see that as a redemption. Totally. Yeah, no. And, and I took away, yeah, I don't, I don't think that this character, I, you could write one, but it would like, it's almost like writing the redemption arc. Uh, well, anyways, I don't want to jump into other fantasy things, but um I think you could write one. It would take a lot to actually believe it, right? You'd have to be a really great writer to re- write a redemption arc for Landfear. But could he, would she ever turn back to the light? Would she ever basically choose the light over the shadow? I think yes. I think she would, again, if it's in her best interest. Mm. Um, I think she would. But that doesn't mean she's redeemed ah. or has changed at all, if that makes sense. I mean, that's I think just, it depends I think it's on... Just, it, it depends... It, I guess I guess it depends on uh, the, without the dark one having been sealed, could she have physically done that? I mean, is there such a connection between the chosen and the the dark one that they can't really well, swear? Because even as Modian still thought of himself as as a chosen. Yeah, but she hated the dark one at the very end, right? And in the end, she did choose to not. She didn't need Perrin. She didn't need anybody. She could have disrupted that. She could have, she could have done something. Now, would the wheel have allowed her to do it? <laughs> That's a. Now, the, it was so close to Shale Gull. Uh, the worlds were falling apart. I don't know how much the wheel would have had control over that moment. And so I'm going to say probably not. It probably couldn't stop her. And still, she chose not to disrupt it because she preferred a world in which the Dark One was actually sealed away. She did not prefer the world in which the Dark One was still available for her because of the last chance, because of probably what was done to her, right? Uh, so I still think she was in that moment choosing the side of the light, but honestly just choosing her self-interest, which just happened to be on the side of the light. It doesn't like, she was choosing herself uh, and it just I happened think, to Matt, work I think for the, the benefit of the light. I if think that there's makes a difference sense. between I think there's a difference between not the dark and the light. And it, the, it's, I think she, she chose not the dark, not necessarily the light. So, yes, um, that's true. Um, she did not help. That's accurate. She did not help. She stood off to the side. So I, I think that's a fair way to put that one, that she chose not the dark. Boots, do you like that? Do you like that distinction? Not the dark, not necessarily chose the light in that moment? Yeah, she she decided to remain neutral and and hedge her bets again. Um, yeah, I think you know when she she drilled into the bore and and she found that power. Um, sure, it wasn't the power she thought it was, but in a way it was. And I think as she explored the possibilities of that power, and then loose the loose Theron uh, pathway was cut off. Um, she's like, well, I'm going to embrace this power, and she embraced that lifestyle and embraced that power, and then. It's not all it's cracked up to be, um, and it's it's you know putting putting her down. It's 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 not to her standards anymore, and so she's just gonna yeah. I like standing to the side. Um, she's gonna see what what can come up next, and but I think if there was a pathway to the light that involved power and her gaining power that she thought was you know suited for herself, adequate for herself, then um, she would go for it. But yeah, I, I do like okay. that she stood to the side okay. in that moment. Okay, I'm going to go back, Andrew. I'm going to let you go here. I'm going to I'm going to change this poll question. No, I'm going to end, end this yep. one. I I'm going to read this question. quote. I, oh yeah, I go have, for it. Go for it. Matt, yeah, yeah. I just have one. I have one question, and that uh, just it, it, it's something that that Boots just said. So if and then I'll and I'll hang up and let you guys talk about it. If 
if she was still dating and she even married LTT and then drilled the bore, do you think she would go over to the shadow at some point during the um, collapse? All right, and thanks. Okay, uh, that's a good question. I want to think about that one. Thank you, Andrew. As always, love hearing from you, man. I hope you're enjoying Land Free yep. Week, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Guess you, man. Bye. Yep. Interesting. Right. So I we had a question like this yesterday, but this isn't quite the same one. If they had married, she had gotten that, and then had afterwards drilled the bore. Do we believe that she would have eventually turned to the shadow anyway? Pavara, mm-hmm. do you have an answer to this? I... I'm really ambivalent about that. I feel like it could go either way with her. It really, I think it really depends on how much status she had gained from being with Luz Theron and how, how much censure she got from the after, the after effects of the drilling of the bore. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to say this and I said this, or I still believe it. I don't think there's ever enough power for her. I think she would have found something else that there was a st- that stopped her. I think there would have been something else that she would have said this is now what I want and she could not have that and that she would have eventually chosen the shadow because of it. I don't think there's ever enough for her. That that's that's how she comes across over ages, you know. She's been alive for hundreds of years, right? And even at the end where the world is breaking apart. She still stands neutral and out of way and just for herself. So I don't think we can say that there's any evidence to prove that she wouldn't have found some other thing that she could not attain and that she wouldn't have sought more power to attain it. That's, uh, that's I, I feel pretty strongly about that one. Boots, how do you feel? Yeah, I, I think even if she, yeah, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Um, I, if she, because she was looking for this power they could all share, and was she on that project when she was still together with Luz, or not? Um, that's I think it said um, <laughs> broke off the relationship some years before drilling of the bore. Mm. So you could say that she it's 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 a research project, right? So they could have been on that for ten, twenty, thirty years, and it could just happen to be that. But yes, you could say that maybe she switched the projects. It was yeah. she was researching the one power. This was a place where they did research on the one maybe power. They did that. So yeah. this might have been a new project for her. Maybe it was like, okay, screw it. Like maybe the only way I can get a third name because I can't. Lose Theron is never going to help me now. Um, is it's hard to know. We don't know how long that project. So that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, because the yeah. power is attractive, and I think you know, even boring the hole into the creating the bore like she's looking at that power it's not the power she wanted but maybe then she starts studying that power because there was obviously something they can sense and the true power is yeah. is there and being accessed but um you know if the the light has that counterbalance power that she could find a way to tap into then yeah maybe she would go <laughs> towards the other side but it's, that's but, um, again but only for her own benefit right like only it's, for her own benefit, yeah even when and, she's yeah. helping it feels like it's only out of because it's going to bring something to her not because it's for like uh i brought yeah. this quote up yesterday uh she had gated in to see ravine i think and he had said don't tell me you're here to help a defenseless woman you know like he's like making fun of the idea that like (laughs) don't try to make me think that you're here to help someone even this defenseless woman that could actually use your help because you're very powerful like the most powerful female channeler but don't tell me you're here to help someone um and so yes that's his view of it but i still think that that rings pretty true um but Mirren doesn't think so so let's read this because i want to ask everyone this poll question one more time we'll bring our next caller in here shortly Mirren fights back to Lou's or Rand's accusations here. So let's read this one. Um, I will, I'll, do this, uh, I'll do this one, and then uh, Boots, I'll have you read the next one. Uh, we shared something special once, she said. You were my... I was an ornament to you, Rand snapped. He breathed deeply, trying to calm himself. Light, but it was hard around her. The past is done. I care nothing for it and would gladly give you a second chance at the light. Unfortunately, I know you. You're not. You're just doing it again, playing us all, including the dark one himself. You care nothing for the light. You care only for power, Mirren. You honestly want me to believe that you've changed? 
You do not know me so well as you think that you do, she said, watching him as he rounded the perimeter of her prison. You never did. Okay, that's that's a... So then he 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 asked her to prove it here. So go ahead and uh, read this, Boots, if you can. Let me, yeah, let me know. Then prove it to me, Rand said, stopping. Show me your mind, Mirren. Open it to me completely. Give me control over you here in this place of mastered dreams. If your intentions are pure, I will free you. What you ask is forbidden. Rand laughed. When has that ever stopped you? She seemed to consider it. She must actually have been worried about her imprisonment. Once she would have laughed at such a suggestion as this. Since this was ostensibly a place where he had complete control, if she gave him leave, he could strip her down and delve within her mind. And then the last one here, which is like, the, this takes the cake. This is so great. And uh, you want to finish this off for us, Pavara? I, Lanfear said, he stepped forward right to the lip of the prison. That tremble in her voice, that felt real. The first genuine emotion from her. Light, he thought, searching her eyes. Is she actually going to do it? I cannot, she said. I cannot. She said it the second time more softly. Rand exhaled. He found his hands shaking. So close. So close to the light. Like a feral cat in the night, stalking back and forth before the firelit barn. He found himself angry, angrier than before. Always she did this, flirting with what was right, but always choosing her own path. Yeah, well, like uh, great. I love that. So close to the light, like a feral cat in the night, stalking back and forth before the fire lit barn. <laughs> that, that's a that is a condemnation of uh, that mm -hmm. character over hundreds of years, right? Uh, that that still flirting with what was right, but always choosing on the path. And I don't take that like she actually intended to. I think it was a very calculated. Of, I think that whole thing was calculated on her part. Like, like could she afford to do it? Would it bring her anything that she wanted? You know, what if he saw the real thing and he didn't free her because she knew that he would see that it wasn't pure? What if she could in this moment finally show how she felt to him after all this time? Would that change his mind? And eventually she, right, like the way Brandon writes this is perfect. And she's like, I can't. No, nope, I'm not doing it. And uh, and he's just now he's just more pissed off, <laughs> always choosing her own path. So like a great, great scene. Uh, we, that's not the end of it. But I want to ask everyone. Um this would Lanfear ever turn back to the light 41% said yes 59% said no so now I want to re-ask that after we've had this conversation Andrew called in we had this and we kind of read that part here I want to ask you know um, would Lanfear ever turn back to the light and I'm going to say yes um, she'll always choose herself um, or no. Um, I, that's what, like, that's technically, how about this? Uh, no, I'm not going to ask that question. You're all going to be like, that's a terrible poll. <laughs> I just realized in the end we have the answer, which is um, she's always going to choose her own path, right? Like, do you believe that and agree with that, Pavara? Is that, again, that's Rand's view. It's Luz Theron's view. We cannot get into this person's mind. Do you believe that she will always choose her own path, regardless if it's the light or the dark, and she's never necessarily gonna choose either of those other sides. It's always gonna be her own. Yeah, I think just based on her actions, what we actually see her do, not necessarily on what other people think of her, we see that she does that, like repeatedly she does that. In the Age of Legends, she did that. In the Third Age, she does that. She chooses what she thinks is going to give her the best outcome. Yeah, like always, right? And it's, but it's not, it's the others, right? It's, it's not that other people don't do this. They choose their own path. But when put up against the light and the dark, they might go one way or the other, right? A lot of the Forsaken mm -hmm. went and choose the shadow. Like they want the shadow to win. They actually believe in the immortality. And she's like, no, my own path is I need to destroy the dark one and the creator. Like she's choosing her own path, which to me is what always has made her a fascinating character and villain. Right. There's mm -hmm. not there's not a, a light and a dark for her. There's just her own. Right. There's her own her own path, uh, which I think is which does not what you find with the other forsaken. Um, but that's it's, it's, not, it's a lack yeah. of a lack of trust that, you know, I'm just I've just got to have my own path. She can't trust anyone, even yeah. lose Brett slash Rand in that moment. You know, she can't trust the dark one. She can't trust mm -hmm. anyone. 
Yeah. I don't she, know. she does yeah, not. I completely agree. Yeah. She does not trust. And we're not given enough information to know if that's just a core thing that's always been there. Like, what is it? Where does that come from? Could she trust before that moment where she couldn't have him? And then it just, like, she chose for that moment to mean, like, no, I won't, I won't want it. anything else I can't have and I won't trust anyone. It's unclear. We don't, we don't have that enough information about her. And I don't, no one ever asked Jordan that question, you know? Uh, these are some of these, like, uh, when you think about what am I going to ask Robert Jordan and you have a moment, you know, some of these kind of deeper questions about characters don't even, like, come to mind, you know, but you kind of wish, like, oh, yeah, give us some more information about this character. would really be, that would have been fascinating. Uh, let's, we have two other callers, which is probably the only time we'll have for our final two callers here. And uh, we're going to do a giveaway tonight. If you were here last night, stick around. After the show is over, you can leave a comment. I will choose, basically, um, you know, someone's comment from uh, from the show afterwards, and I will send them a a giveaway, or sorry, a, a, like a, why can't I think of the word, a gift certificate for their Zazzle store, and we'll do one in live chat tonight. So if you're still with us, you have two opportunities in live chat, and then if you stick around afterwards and leave a, leave us a comment, uh, this is the fun way of kind of like me hearing back from you from Landfear, and also it's a way for the YouTube gods to help people find these videos afterwards. Is if there's comments and people are talking about this on a live stream after it's over. Uh, YouTube tends to uh, show this to more people. So would love you to leave a comment what you loved about this episode and what you disagreed with or agreed with in this conversation. And, uh, but we won't get to that after these two calls and we'll, you know, we'll get final thoughts and uh, we'll do all that. So let's bring our last two callers in. Hey, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. Who's this? Hello. Hello, can you hear us? Hi, good night. My name is Shelly Ann. How Shelly Ann, how you doing? Are you still there? Hello. Can First, you hear us? I'm going to yeah. say, I'm Jamaican. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we are. We are. We are. Go ahead. Yeah. First, I have to say, I'm Jamaican, but I'm living in America. And okay. I'm going to take a little bit of credit because I convinced four of my family members to read the book. Awesome. To include and, and another person, my son, he's 12 years old. So I convinced five persons. So I'm going to take a little bit of credit. I, you should. You should take credit. How about that? <laughs> How many persons can say that? Uh, well, uh, the people that you're talking to here, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's. I feel like you're asking a question of like a really hardcore group, and there's probably some out there. Well, I'll, I'll ask everybody. This is a great I, question. No, we're, I'm, we're, not talk, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about that. I know that I'm talking to a hardcore group, but I'm saying <laughs> I convinced five person in my family to read the book and I'm a new and I just started reading the book since the TV show because I didn't know anything about the universe of the wheel of time or anything my 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 younger sister got me into the book got me into the show but she didn't want to read it she just wanted did it like oh, with um the game of thrones so we got into it so no, you, I got a few questions because okay, even though I'm in America and I watch uh, sometimes I watch a show your your um, on YouTube live. My cousins that are in Jamaica, yeah, they tend to watch it afterward. Okay, so <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, first and foremost, Lancier is my favorite. Welcome, Forsaken. Welcome to the club. <laughs> and <laughs> so I'm a little bit giddy, so bear with me. So first of all, I, Matt and Ren are my favorite. So, and the reason why I like Lanfear the most is because she has her own mind of all the Forsaken. And um, she, even though she's obsessed with power, I think she loves Ran and she loves Luce Theron. Okay. I think she, I, I think the power is a little bit 60 40, but I think she does. Okay. Even though I hear, I hear like my family that they, they it's like a power it's, it's like a power struggle, but I don't think so. It's like you have two A-list celebrity because she's and to me I don't think the the third name is that important because she's the strongest strongest female Forsaken of all the Forsaken, and we and she could have destroyed a run from the get go. But she chose not to. And I think it's because of love. Don't you think so? 
So I, I think it's because of how she loves. I don't know that I would say that she loves well, or considers love, love the and, way that I power. love. Love and power. That's what I'm saying. It's like, in the end, I think everyone can love differently, right? Some people think like duty is love. You know, some people like, some people break down love into different attributes where uh, I think for her, like the way she considers uh -huh. love is how she <laughs> how she loves Louis Theron. Uh, you know, there's she she sees like maybe uh, she wants someone to be her equal, right? She sees love or needing to love someone. You have to be with someone. Kind of like you brought up like A-listers. You know, it's like where someone's like, I can't date anyone that does not have my status. You know, or I have to marry as elite, no, but you know, so I think she does. I think the way that she perceives love is related to power. I think she, she's like, no, this, I, I love yeah, this person because they are so, as but, powerful as I am, they, you know? They are as powerful as, um, say you have two A-listers, but at the same time, what the funny thing about it is this, she didn't understand both in the first, in the, um, in the, Age of Legend and and the thirties is that Ran has no interest in power. That's the only thing I think she make a mistake in. Ran don't crave power. He doesn't want it at all, and that's what she wants. And I think if she just um because when Ran um saw her first and was traveling with her, it's like he was so he was all into her, but over time. He realized it's all about power for her. That if she just maybe humble herself a little bit, but uh, you know those um, persons like you yeah, have some females, yeah, and strong females that don't think that, like, listen, because I have this, they don't think like it's a fifty-fifty. To me, it's only about what she wants. Yeah, because I've, even yeah. this, I was talking to one of my cousins. I was like, I was saying to her, the third age doesn't, the, the third name doesn't matter because Asmodian has the third, um, the third name. But he, <laughs> the only thing we credit him for is being Land, um, Rand's teacher. That's all. But <laughs> Mary know everything. Oh, so I, I, I am I, I wrong? I'm well, I, I would disagree with it. She didn't care about it. I think she absolutely cared about it because it was a symbol. She cared of, about it, but I'm because it's my but Luce, Luce I'm Theron, not talking about her. I'm talking about me. Yeah, but what do you mean? Is I think that Luce Theron had it. So for them to be on the same level, she had to have it, right? So like she could not like well, she she had to have right, it in order for them sense. to kind of be. In, if that makes sense. sense. But, but I also think, like, no, when what, what, when she chooses what, what her either. own name with the dark one, does that scratch that itch for her? You know, yeah. when she becomes Lamphere, does that scratch that itch and she can kind of move on because, you know, I loses think, a lost I, cause at that I, moment? I, oh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would absolutely think that. Uh, I Shelley, think so. When, Shelley, when she do, her do, you so. Think, do you think that she can... Because I want, I want to let you go and and uh, with this final question, and then you can ask us one final question. Do you think that got, she would I ever know, choose the I light? Ask me final question, but I have. I think she. To be honest with you, I think it's a. I to my when I was reading the book, I think he has a difference between the two orders because I think, in my perspective, I think um, Robert Jordan was setting her up just like what Intar said. Have you ever gone too far that you can turn back to the light? To me, that's what I think he was setting her up for. Uh, to me, because when I read um, in Memory of Light, when Parent, I was like, no way. There's no way in heaven. Somebody that has no know so much about Sarah, um, the dream world, for somebody that just learning about it, to kill somebody that knows so much about, I was like, there's no way. There's something else. There's something else. Until I heard they said that it was like a pretense. I was like, oh my God. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it in my heart. Because when you think of all, when you think about of all the first thing, because I was talking to one of my cousins, she was like, I think it's a um, power struggle. I think 
lose Saren or Ran. To me, I I think it's two different characters. Even though they're in one, to me, I think it is different. But when I, um when they when when um for instance when they were uh, there, she, to me, Marin is just she she loves him, but she can give up the power struggle because she want to be the best. She want to do all the things. And I was like, you don't see that at all? I don't see where in she's, he's trying to lead her a different way. I don't get it where you're... Re- I, don't, I don't get that in any of the chapters where she's trying to lead Lucerne or she's trying to lead Ran. Um, like, they're trying to lead her. She's the one. She took charge of every situation, but there's just one difference. He wants power and they don't. To me. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good take. There's, that's like, that's a good take on it. Equal. I, I, I want to because I want to bring up a point that you bring up, and then I want to give you a chance for one last question because I have to go on to our next caller. But I want to bring up this point, which is I that know. she I'm sorry, she but is. I'm calling for four different person. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I love the love of land fear. Are you kidding me? Like this is stuff I live for. So you're 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 someone that you're someone that loves. You love land fear, and uh, you know like. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not deep as you guys. When the book came out, I just started watching the show when it came out on Amazon. I had no idea about it. So to be honest with you, I'm so happy I got a chance to talk to you guys. And I watch, and me and my family, we watch you guys on YouTube. Every video you put awesome. on YouTube, we do watch you guys. So let me say that, and congratulations on your um. On your milestone the other day. Oh, thank you. But yeah. we're, I am obsessed with Matt, Ran, and Marin. I, I'm, I'm with you there on the Marin part. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you're awesome. <laughs> I hope you... Ran and Matt. Oh, that's not fair. Well, I, I hope you continue like spreading the good news about the Wheel of Time to your family. I think it's amazing that you've already gotten like. Uh, by the way, I did ask that question while we were talking. About a hundred people, close to hundred people, voted on this. How many of you have convinced? How many people have you convinced to read the Wheel of Time? Seventy percent have convinced between one and five. So you are talking to a crowd that 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 feels what you feel oh, and I loves the books. Five. I like five, but yeah, I know. Wow. Yeah, keep I like keep going. A lot. And to keep, be honest, <laughs> I was talking to my husband. I was talking to my husband the other day. That's just a little. Um, I know I'm trained a little bit, but I'm so I'm so excited because <laughs> I get a chance to something. So I was telling him he didn't want to read the book. So I told him about Avienda, Min, and Elaine, and I was like, I can't stand Avienda. So my husband was like, You're just like her. That's who you were with me. I was like, No, I'm a Min. <laughs> I'm a Min. He was like, Oh no. No, you're not. So I was like, I just want to put that part in too. I I appreciate I appreciate that and great characters, Min and Avienda. So Landfear, Min, Avienda. I you, we are we see the Wheel of Time very similarly. So uh, I'm, I hope you continue watching. I hope you continue calling back. And what a perfect moment to call in about Landfear. I mean, we're doing shows, three more shows about Landfear this week. So. Don't feel like you can't call back in and continue to add to the conversation. So please do. My cousins, they're working in Jamaica at this time. It's, at this time, it's like 9 o'clock in Jamaica, and they're working. So they don't have a time to get a chance. So they always watch it afterwards. It's awesome. So to be honest, they, um, some of them, like, like um, to be honest, they were like, Mira needs this and Mira. And to be honest, Mogidian is terrible. Come here, Lancia helped more than Hoshi. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How are you going to say you're going to like her? When she kills children and on women or whatever. Are you... Lancia helped more than she kills because even though it's in her self-interest. Um, I... For instance, um, she helped the light more than she hurts the light. You don't think so? I, I think that is a good question to ask. I'm going to ask my two call, my two guests that question after. I'm going to let you go, but that's a great question to uh, to bring to end this with and ask our. Uh, but, but but do call in again, okay? We we loved it. I will. I'm um okay. I'm sorry to take up so much. Anna no, Anderson. it's like, I'm a little bit 
a little bit of I'm a little bit obsessive, so I'm sorry. We're all Maybe passionate. We're all passionate here. We're <laughs> good friends. No, no, we're loving it. We're loving it. So uh, I, again, please do don't stop calling back. And there's never you can never say enough about Lanfear or your dislike for Mogedian, honestly. <laughs> so I or liking me. <laughs> yeah, or liking men, or like it, or okay. Uh, well, we'll we'll talk to you soon. I can't wait to hear back from you. We'll uh, and say hi to your family for us, okay? I will. I will. I have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Wonderful. She did bring up a really good uh, yeah. a good point about about yeah. that. Luz Theron and Rand are two distinctly different characters. Yeah. So I do think Le- uh, Lanfear loved Luz Theron, but I don't think she loved Rand. Yes. Um, and because they were definitely two different people. Mm-hmm. And um... yeah, and I think Rand, like he can be more compassionate with Lanfear in that moment, but not get sucked in, um, in that memory of light moment with the pool and everything like that. Like, because he has that little bit of distance yep. um, from those, those feelings. And I think she can see that when he opens himself to her she can see it all a bit yep. better because that there's that rand rand there yeah well she, sure. she she brought this point which i thought was interesting uh because she's talking about love and how much she loved power we know that loose theron was like i'm not into this and he ended the relationship that doesn't mean loose theron didn't love power also it just meant he didn't love being with someone who loved power more than he thought that she loved him does that make sense? Like mm-hmm. in relationships, yeah. right? There is, you definitely have like, some people have this kind of desire to be always front and center for that other person's life. Other people are like, no, I want some distance. And like, I need that distance to, to be in this relationship. And it's interesting. It's like Lanfear, she, she did maybe she didn't understand. Maybe she did. Luz Theron was just like, oh, no, I, I can't handle someone that maybe loves power as much as I like power. <laughs> or I can't, I can't be in a relationship where I'm not, more important than that power that that person wants or that. So it's, it, and I think that, that is what Luz there had recognized. Like, no, nah, this isn't the kind of relationship I, I want. And she's just like, I don't understand how you can't want this relationship. Cause like, we're both the most powerful and why wouldn't you want to be with the most powerful person? And like mm-hmm. she, the way that she wanted a relationship just wasn't the way he wanted it. <laughs> and just like, and she couldn't get ever, go, ever get over the idea of like just finding someone else that wanted it as much as she did. Like, it's, it's one of those things which I get. Like your Bootsy brought up this point of, you know, like there's grief related to some of those relationships and you can't sometimes ever get over like, why? Why did this not? And when you have enough power to try to make that still happen again, maybe you would, right? In the case she did, she, she, felt, like it, she felt like she did. I asked this question to chat. About 60 of you so far have voted, did Lanfear do more for the light or shadow? Ah, interesting. So I got to ask you both, we'll bring this last caller in. Pavara? Do more, did Lanfear do more over two ages for the light or the shadow? I wouldn't say that it was her goal to do anything for either of them necessarily, but I do think in the end she did do more for the light. You think? Okay. Yeah, I, I was surprised. Actually, more people are voting for the light. I, I actually thought people were going to pick the shadow here. It's going back and forth. It's kind of right in the middle. Boots, do you pick the light over the shadow here? Um... Uh, I, I can't speak to, you know, what she did during, um, after the ball, like in the trollic wars and all that breakdown and stuff. But, um, in terms of the books, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. I think evenly divided. Okay. okay. I, I was going to pick the shadow. So I like that we're, we're the light even and the shadow we're, we're balanced. We've, We've accomplished the goal of the wheel is to mm. create bring I have, balance. I, I have to say, like, because when um, Rafe said, you know, the character, like, introduced Natasha and um, uh, uh, Mira, uh, he said, you know, these women are the most important for the story. And I was like, well, that has to be Lanfear. How can, how can Lanfear not be important to the story? Yeah. Um, you know, a, a later, a, a later, you know, she, she sets some things in motion, but she's not that important to the overall story, in my yeah. opinion. I didn't so. ask our caller if she had just as much disdain for Elida as I do. So 
So if you're out there, make sure to give us a call back. Uh, not today, but call in. I need to know what your thoughts are about Elida. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I never thought it was Elida who he was talking about. I don't. Maybe Ray feels that way about Elida. I don't really care. I just never. I could not envision it. And then other people were telling me like, how could you not envision it? Elida is really important. Look, every character, every every reader is going <laughs> to engage with characters differently. I like what Riz Riz Twank said here. Uh, Linking with Rand with Asmodian is a real game changer if we're talking third age. So yeah. that's a good point. Like that was a huge game changer. Definitely in the third age, I feel like you could say that there was more balance towards the light than the than the shadow. It's just hard for me to like accept everything she did in the second age was definitely like self-centered or for the shadow. And I just don't think you can kind of go to the, maybe I'm just. I think there's mentions that she did like a lot of, there's some atrocities and stuff like that. Yeah. That she committed, so, you uh, know. I'm going to end this poll. I'm so but shocked. Like for the light. Uh, yeah, eight, in the 53%. end. 53%. Um, okay. In, okay. In the end. Yeah. The light won and it wouldn't, the, the light wouldn't have won without her help. Without okay. her. Yeah. Interference. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like this comment. Light blinded fool. Dusty Wheel, if Lanfear wasn't in the books, it would have been a boring story about Chora trees, parties, and chilling out in the second age equivalent of smartphones. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. That sounds yeah. like so much fun. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the people are like this is a comment by Zach. Lanfear Boreth and Lanfear allow, allow you to be sealeth away. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. uh, and that, Look, this isn't a pick on Elida, but I'm going to point this one out. Elida's a character without a point. Okay, anyways, uh, we're gonna not going to stay there. I'm going to by my sister in red and say that Elida is also an amazing character. Okay. And she deserves more credit than she's given. Yeah, maybe we'll, say, maybe we'll do, we'll we'll do Elida week. It's giving me some more more thought about Elida, but I'm kind of in Matt's hmm. camp on Elida very much. Someone <laughs> out there who would like to do Elida week for YouTube live streams, you... I think you should do it. Anyone out there? <laughs> uh, let's bring our last caller into the show here. Hey, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. Who's this? Great and keeper, as always. <laughs> I raise my glass to you, sir. Norm! Good to see you, sir. And ladies, ladies, I bow to you, and I raise my glass to you. And to everybody in chat and everybody in the world, hope you all have a great fourth tomorrow. So what's up? <laughs> Sorry, Norm. <laughs> Riswake just said, I didn't realize Lanfear Week meant Masida slander. <laughs> uh, Norm, we are, you are our final caller today in our discussion of Mirren and the Second Age. We obviously touched on the boar uh, during the first episode yesterday. We touched on it more today. But we really focused, really focused on this relationship and how it changed kind of trajectory of this character from the Second Age and kind of what some of the key points from Robert Jordan's notes, from the books, and from the conversation we have in the text from Brandon Sanderson. You've heard all this conversation, I think, up until now. What is it you'd like to bring to the table as far as either a topic, a question, or what are your thoughts about Lanfear and Mirren in the Second Age? Well, first off, I have to say, and this is very difficult to follow that last caller. So this is this is this is my thought. The uh, Lanfear to me, and I'll answer also your previous question as well. Lanfear to me is a combination of three characters. Okay. She is Morgan Le Fay from uh, Excalibur or the King Arthur story. She's Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. Okay. And she's Mrs. Haversham from Great Expectations. Okay. You put all those three people into an amalgam and you get yourself Lanfear. And and also with a supermodel. But anyway, you put all that together, you get Lanfear. And the the one thing that all three of those characters have in common is that God forbid, or I should say light forbid, that Lanfear should have a child. Because if she did to answer your question, Matt, about whether or not Landfield can, can go to the light, I believe no, she could not. But if Landfear had a child, okay. that would be the game changer because that would be the one thing that she would have to either love more than herself 
or more love more than power or is something about she could corrupt or mold or something like that and then if that child had a complete you know 180 and found love or found something that was completely at the antithesis of mom then maybe that child could be the one thing that could turn Lanfear. So that 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 would be for me the only thing that would be able to change her because otherwise to to quote someone in in, in chat Anakin Skywalker did know how to love and he believed in love. He was just twisted by the emperor to make it so that love turned into an obsession, turned it into something that was not pure. Because otherwise, Anakin would have been straight. If, if the emperor was never emperor or a lot of other things that happened in the Star Wars saga, we won't go there. Anakin would have been fine and would never have turned into Darth Vader. But because of land fear and Spoilers. her moment when Luce Theron dumped her and then she bursts she bores into the boar and then, okay, F. Luce Theron, love hath no fury, but a woman scorned, she turned to the darkness. So, you know, it's always about choices and circumstances and, and things that happen to make land fear go down, you know, the dark path and forever will it dominate her destiny. So... You know, that's that's my two cents on Lanfear. So I mean okay. yeah, she's gonna be she's gonna Lanfear. Lanfear is gonna Lanfear. So <laughs> Lanfear is <yeah>. gonna <laughs> Lanfear. I like it. <laughs> Hashtag. Yeah. Uh Lanfear is gonna Lanfear. I think that's a uh, truth. Uh yeah, go ahead, uh Pavar. I don't think that Lanfair would be a great mother. She would totally be like the stereotype of the worst dance slash pageant mom for the shadow <laughs> ever. <laughs> you think the, I, the I think yeah. she I think she would use her child to gain more power. <laughs> that's uh I do totally. I do wonder well, if that's remember I, did, remember I did say she was part Mrs. Haversham. And if you remember yes. in the book, Mrs. Havisham, you know, eventually died at the end, of the, and the girl went off and did her own thing. So, I mean, I agree. Lancer would be a horrible mom, but I also <laughs> believe that the child would somehow redeem mom in some way if that was if at all possible. Okay, I just so, I want to say I asked everyone, <laughs> would Lancer make the best parent among the Forsaken? You're at a 25, 75% uh, vote total right now. Um, so I, I'm feeling like that's not going to be the case. Uh, hold on a second. Masana, great with kids. Uh, Masana? Um, yeah, great with kids. Uh, <laughs> the, I, I, she was. <laughs> uh, Norm, it's always good to hear your voice, man. Uh, you tried to make the, the, the parent play. And I agree with you. Um, I would I would agree with this from the human experience standpoint. Big changes in life do affect people's personalities, their choices. Um, would motherhood be the thing for Lanfear? I don't know. I uh, I can't say. Other than up to this point in her history, I would say nothing is going to take away what we believe to be true about her, which is she would do anything to get what she would want. And I don't know that we would want her. Uh, especially if her child was a channeler to be raising someone in that way, but maybe they would be like the opposite. <laughs> and so, Oh, that's the, that's the arc is that Lanfear's child would eventually have to like kill uh, their mother, you know, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Norm, thank you very much for bringing the, the, the final point to this Lanfear epic story at the end of the age of legends, man. It's always great to hear your voice, sir. And hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, you guys have a great week, and we'll talk to you later. You too, man. Hey, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody. Uh, Terry, my wife, is going to help me uh, grab something because Taylor's not here. Terry, can you go over there? Do you see that screen over there? The uh, Can you push that? All you do is grab that and go down with it. Nope. Let me give that back to you. Give you the, the mouse there. Um, and then you just need to grab it, and you go down with it. Yep. Uh, just drag it down to the bottom of the screen there. Let me know when you did that. I did. I you still did. can't get Lanfear oh. with my baby out second. of my head. 
<laughs> Do you still see it over there or no? Yeah, right. Um, okay, so you don't see it over there, Terry? No. Oh, well, uh, we might not uh, get that. Uh, let go of that real quick. Okay, so uh, there we... <laughs> We may not get the, uh, let me, let me try to close that. I'm going to try it one more time here. I'm trying to get the mug for you all. Um, do you see it now, Terry or no? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give this back to you there and then yeah, drag it all the way down to the very bottom and I don't see it yet. No, and we might not get it. Everyone, <laughs> you might have to, oh yeah, you could. But it's going to be hard to explain to you in the midst of this live stream how to go ahead and figure that out. But do you see something that says, like, uh, Dusty Wheel Swag? Look for a, if you look for a giveaway, do you see a Dusty Wheel Swag giveaway? Terry's going to look and see if she finds a Dusty Wheel Swag giveaway, everybody. So this is going to come down to whether or not Terry finds it. And, and while that happens, I, I want to bring up the – oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Innkeeper. <laughs> That's, I totally forgot. Uh, Anna's, can, Anna's can do this. So <laughs> – <laughs> yes, yes, my fellow innkeeper. I forgot that you can do this remotely for us. So he'll start the giveaway. Sorry, I thought uh, I'd forgotten that he uh, could do that for us. I want to show this one while that giveaway comes together. Um, we One last thing we didn't bring up was from Origins of the Wheel of Time. Uh, we have Lanfear, and it, we have her name derives from the French Lenfer, meaning hell, combined with the English word fear. So I think that that's very much appropriate. And then Mirren Arenel, uh, Michael Livingston, believes that the original name of Lanfear, it echoes in the Irish mythological figure of Mirren or Mirren, a woman with many suitors. Her epithet is Beautiful Lips, whose father tried to prevent her marriage. Mirren's surname might be an allusion to the Aaron, Aaron I don't know how you pronounce this, Aaron, yes? uh, the Furies of Greek mythology. Is there anything that kind of stands out to you from that information? I started looking deeper into this, and I was like, mm, I don't have enough time to actually figure that out. Uh, but thought it was quite interesting. Uh, were you surprised when Lanfear's name, I, I didn't realize Lanfear meant hell, <laughs> and then combining it like with the word fear in English. Uh, uh, hell hath no fear, Andrew, I like that one. What do you think about that, Pavara? Had you seen that one before, uh, and did that just make sense to you? I must have missed that when I read Origins, but yeah, that uh, that actually makes complete sense. I was surprised by how close it is, like Lanfear, Lanfear. Yeah, Lanfear. Yeah, I was like, this stuff is just there, and I, I I'm so bummed that I uh, did not see that. It does look like a Dusty Wheel swag raffle has begun. Everyone, you can type in exclamation point raffle as a single word, and we will end that here in the next couple of minutes. Like I said, if you don't win this and you still want an opportunity to walk away with some, you just have to wait till the video's over and leave a comment at the very end. Just your favorite uh, part of the discussion, your favorite uh, thing about Lanfear, if you already, if you haven't left that in the previous video, and you can go back to the other video from yesterday and leave a comment if you didn't, and then you'll have another opportunity there. That's right, you're going to have five opportunities to leave comments for a potential uh, Dusty Wheel swag. So um, I, I think uh, that's that's. <laughs> Just as many, all of you putting in the exclamation point raffle, a little bit more work, and you can have another opportunity. So while that's going on, Boots, any final thoughts, things we didn't cover today, digging into the Age of Legends as it related to Lanfear and Luz Theron? Um, no, I don't think so. I just, I just, yeah, it's, I just don't think it's, I think Luz has, has, I'd like to get more information on Luz and what Luz was like in this age. <laughs> right, that's, right. That's what I would like to know. It, um, it, it does yeah. feel like we're kind of speaking without knowing enough about him to kind of mm. piece together that relationship. By the way, uh, here for Watt, uh, whoever's in chat, you you put a space between exclamation point and raffle, so that won't, won't enter you. So go ahead and add that again as one word. Pavara, any other final thoughts, uh, things we didn't cover, things we didn't dig into about – Lanfear Luz or Mirren and Luz Theron and the Age of Legends. I can't think of anything we didn't cover. I just, uh, I, I want to say that the more I learn about Lanfear, the more I appreciate her. I used to not like her uh, at very much at all. She was just that crazy ex-girlfriend trope. Um, but yeah. yeah, the more I learned about her, the more uh, I realized how in depth Jordan wrote about her. The more I realized that she's actually a, an incredibly interesting character, and she's, she's one of my favorites. 
Yeah, I, 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 a lot of people told me that knowing that she survived even at the end actually made them like her. Like they didn't like her. And then it was like, oh, now I do. I, I appreciate her mm -hmm. as a character because at the end, it did seem it like it was like the, the trope had kind of overtaken a bit, in my opinion, like how yeah. fandom looked at this character. And I would get people ask me all the time, like, why would you like her and all these other things? And I'm like, oh, they're the most interesting theories and the most interesting speculation to me re touch on things that she's doing. And they're like, well, you don't know that, that she's doing that thing or whatever. Um, tomorrow, by the way, if you're interested in theories and The Wheel of Time and even Land Fear, we're going to talk about those things. So we'll, uh, we'll go over some of those and we'll pick uh, your favorite. Uh, well, but she, yeah, she doesn't I, let people know her very easily, does she? I mean, you're going to be oh, launching no. into all the masks and she glamours people and she's yeah. this and she's that and she she's a chameleon. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and you, you see little only little tiny hints of that humanize yeah. her and tell her story. So... Yeah, you wouldn't, you, you can't, I don't think you can. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think Luz Theron basically ran pointed that at the very end, right? He's like, open your mind. And yes, I understand how revealing that is. Would any of us do that with a partner? You I know. know. I, I, I hope I would, <laughs> you know, but like given that opportunity to see everything in your mind, I think I would, but I get just like, I would maybe one person on this earth, but not more than that, right? And so I, but at the same time, it was an opportunity to kind of prove out who she really was to him. And she avoided that again, because I think she does hide behind her mask. Doesn't want to be known, always wants to, uh, you know, have a way out and doesn't want to trust anyone. So yeah, fa fascinating I characters, has, I think. I think she has a lot of self doubt too. Maybe she doesn't believe she is. She's as good as she, as Luz Theron wants her to be. Uh, it's, it's possible. I mean, I think you, there's a case to be made that some of this is bravado, uh, but, it's really self-assured bravado. Like she, yeah. she doesn't let that mask. If that's really what's back there, that could be, that could be like, and she would hate that anyone would feel sorry for her for that too. And she would never want people to like know that because then she would want to mm -hmm. probably kill them if they ever found that out. So, oh, did, the, uh, my fellow innkeeper already ended it. We were looking away and Thatcher won the mug. <laughs> Congratulations, Thatcher. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I should throw that up there. That's right. Uh, Thatcher has won some dusty swag. Congratulations. That's awesome. You, uh, you, uh, just reach out to me again on through discord or through social media. And eventually I will get you. <laughs> Sometimes it takes some time. Everybody that just takes time. That's what happens. Boots. Thank you for being our guest. Uh, like first time, first time guest here. I know. And Pavara, Maybe. thank you for coming back and talking uh, with us. This was, I hope you both had fun. This was, it's, this is a joy for me to talk about this character. And we talked about doing this for the very longest time. So I appreciate being part of this Land Fear Week experience. And uh, hopefully this is not the last time I see you at the Dusty Wheel. We have a season two coming and apparently a season three. So we got, we got time to be doing some live streams and talking about the Wheel of Time. So, and, uh, and I have to say, I've been watching Natasha in, Peaky Blinders, and she's the queen of micro expressions. So I think, you know, we've got okay. we've got a good one coming. Yeah, I I, I can't wait to uh, talk about that on Wednesday too. Like we'll be digging into that. I have to spend some of July fourth tomorrow <laughs> catching up on some of those uh, Land Fear Week. Uh, it's a lot of live streams. And there's a lot of studying to be done. So I hope you'll all come back tomorrow and talk theories about Land Fear with us. Uh, that's gonna be a blast. I'm gonna have Frenzy, my old friend from Theoryland. And Wheel of Cussin, if you follow Wheel of Cussin on Twitter of Time. And uh, we're going to be talking all about the theories from back in the day. And we'll talk about some new ones. But things we saw come through, how we felt about them. And uh, I think we're just having uh, – it'll be a fun Theoryland-filled uh, discussion of Landfear. And so thank you to all of our callers. It was amazing to hear from you. I hope you've had fun again on this episode. And congratulations, Thatcher. This was great. And I, I agree. I should uh, – I, her and his best friend is there then Matt showing up tomorrow. Yes. I will definitely try to wear my theory then t-shirt even. How about that? Um, okay, everybody, I got to go and hang with the family go for a walk. I get back out into the real world until I jump back into some more studying about land fear. And with that, as we sit around here, good night from the dusty wheel and smash to black.
you went right to kill it. Look at you, you're all ready. You're just done. I mean, this is like, uh, this is really like well. Um, and now I'm like, great, my turn. <laughs> and if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have, but he Gosh. didn't. So okay. Just complimented so, me on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. I just I, I like me as something along the lines of a Shida Haran analog. For the it does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. you know, consistent this is why I have saying. Therese in the show, because she's going to correct everything that Hey everybody, welcome to the Dusty Will Show, what? Me Moth Challenge, yay! Terrible, like, baby face, mounted on, like, a huge body. So, like, all <laughs> this of is not had just it. a <laughs> traditional <laughs> fantasy, right? There there are sci-fi and elements. And just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So, let me get my guests in here with me. He and Probably, I would say, get, put in... 70, 80% of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.